what is the difference between my weekly content newsletter and my monthly content newsletter? Well, let me go ahead and show you on the screen here. So uh, first of all, um, a lot more people have subscribed to my monthly content newsletter than my weekly one. Weekly one just went out, you know, less than 24 hours ago to about 2,000 people or 1,800 people. Um, less than 24 hours, already a 46% open rate. So that's pretty good. Monthly newsletter, I think it's just over 5,000. But here's, let me go ahead and open up each one so you can show, you can see the difference, okay? So that's the monthly. Let me open up the weekly as well, okay? So this is the weekly. Let me go ahead and move this stuff here. This is the weekly. I always do a split test of, of subject lines. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, the weekly one says my recent posts, okay? And it has my... Uh, my most recent post that usually has a LinkedIn article and a Facebook video. This one was kind of extra. I did a Facebook profile discussion. I don't usually have that. Um, and then I have a YouTube video that um, I uploaded uh, recently. And then an Instagram post that I uploaded recently. And then some kind of selling um, thing down here. So that's the weekly one. Okay. Let's take a look at the monthly one. Monthly one. There's the split test by the you might say, George, I thought it was 50% open rate. No, it's, the split test was only for two hours. That's why two hours only that much open rate. And then after that, it got much higher open rate. 54%. Yay. Okay. So monthly one, look at the difference between the two. Weekly, monthly. Do you see any difference? Weekly, monthly. Weekly, monthly. Not much difference, right? The monthly one says my best post of the past month. The weekly one says my recent post. <laughs> the monthly one has basically the best of the previous month. Well, just like it says, my best post of the past month. So based on all my my LinkedIn and Facebook, LinkedIn posts and Facebook videos, which was uh, which was the best. I basically measure based on the, the LinkedIn because the article is kind of like the main idea, uh, the main communication of the message. So I kind of measure that engagement rate and i said well this this one had the biggest engagement rate so i'm gonna i'm gonna feature this one for the monthly one and this one had an article and a video to go along with it so those are the two links and then my best instagram carousel of the past month and then my best youtube video of the past month again same idea i don't know why I, this one says youtube and then instagram this one is Instagram and then YouTube. It doesn't matter. S same same idea, right? It's always it's always those. And then my monthly one also has a selling thing at the bottom here. Uh, some kind of call to action, like maybe it's either selling a course or but not ready to sell it yet. At least some kind of polling about it, uh, a survey slash poll about it. So I hope that's clear. You can you can see all of my monthly ones. I don't have um. I don't have my weekly newsletters available on my website. Just you have to subscribe to it to, to get it. But my monthly newsletters, at least the past three of them, are always available on my website. Even if you don't subscribe as as a as a newsletter subscriber, you can just go to georgecow.com slash monthly and then you'll see those. So I hope that inspires you. It takes me 10 to 15 minutes every week to make an email newsletter. Let me say that again. Some of you are like, what? Wait, did you say 10 to 15 minutes per sentence? No, no, no. <laughs> it takes me 10 to 15 minutes total once a week to, to create and send my newsletter, my email newsletter, because as you can see, it's that easy. I just simply gather what I've already done in the past week. Say, George, that's cheating. You you spent hours you know, doing your content. Well, I, that, I'm not, my newsletter is an aggregation of my content. Yes, sure. I spend another couple hours a week creating those other pieces of content. But then when it comes to my newsletter, it's just, and you could see how high my, my open rate is, which it's almost, it's, you know, my industry average is 25% open rate. My peers on, on average, based on MailChimp's um, metrics, I don't use MailChimp anymore, but MailChimp has email benchmarks. Uh, my industry is about 25, 20 to 25% open rate on average. I have double that and without any graphics in my newsletters and using the exact same format every single week and every single month, my people don't, not my people don't get bored. I think it's a really effective format because it's very calming, right? There's nothing, there's not too much to look at. There's not like, oh, I got to read what, what now I got to read your entire love letter, so-called, <laughs> which always annoys me when people call it love letters, They're like love letters to how many thousands of people that you're sending. Okay. Not a love letter. Come on. Um, 
So look how it's calming because it's 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 just it's just it's a lot of spaciousness and you get to choose what you care about, right? Like if you if you care about this thing, we'll go and read it, you know, watch it. Or if you don't care about it, skip, keep going. You know, do you care about that? You don't, you do, great, click on it. You don't, we'll keep going, you know. So it's it's this kind of format that I think, well, I came up with it because I was lazy. But it happens. I stumbled upon something that works really well. So you can copy my format if you want. I don't care. I mean, everything everything I do is uncopyrighted. So you can copy every, everything I do and anything I do. You can also modify it, test out different things, see if it works well for you. Also, hope that helps. And of course, a good question is George. I don't have the biggest big audience. I have fifty subscribe email subscribers. Should I be more fancy? Should I go and unsplash mid journey, create an awesome graphic to attract them? And to write a love letter, you know, it's 50 people. So I can be in love with 50 people, can I not, right? You can't be in love with 5,000, but you can be in love with 50 people, right? I love missives. Um, I, I make fun of that because that's what very common in the newsletter industry. Um, so, no, I, 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 I don't, I mean, sure, you can always effort more. But the right answer is not what George says is the right answer. George's right answer is, did you test it? And by testing it, I don't mean... Testing one, one week you test it this way. Next week we test it that way. That's not called a test. It, it is a test technically, but you should be like, okay, for, a, for, a, for four newsletters, I'll do it this way. For four newsletters, I'll do it that way. Let's take a look and see what the open rate. And actually I would say this, if you're doing newsletter tests this way versus that way, um, open rate is not really the right metric to test because open rate really tests the subject line. I would say click rate is more the right measure to test. Well, you say, George, what if my entire article is in the newsletter? There's nothing for them to click on. Well, then that's not an accurate test then. So it's 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 kind of tough. I mean, you might say, well, which which of the two formats do you get more responses, engagement with, which is also kind of tricky because <clears throat> the engagement I get is on my social media, right? Because I, I make them click on something and then they comment on LinkedIn or they comment on YouTube or Instagram. So I rarely get email replies to my newsletters. You say, George... You, does that mean your email, your email newsletters are not effective? No, no, no. My email newsletter is effective, as you can see from the open rate. But they comment elsewhere, so I don't get email replies. I get social media comments. So um, you have to do some kind of testing. I don't know what that means for you. But I guess maybe what I'll speak to is there is a very common idea that you have to be attractive when in the beginning, when you have a small audience, you got to like be pretty and like a good dancer and then you'll get enough thousands of people and then you could be lazy like George and not not be a good dancer anymore and not not have mid journey images that that made wow people, you know, I don't know, I feel like <clears throat> I feel like your your energy signature is actually strongest when you're not trying to attract. But when you lean into your caring and your humanity and yes, if you love art. If you love Mid Journey or Unsplash or anything else, and it's fun for you and doesn't take too much time, uh, and it's part of your workflow, well, great, go for it. It's it doesn't you're not you're not you're not trying beyond what you genuinely wish love to do. Great. What I care about is how much damn time are you spending on your newsletter? Okay, number one. And if you're spending a bunch of time, lean into the question: Am I trying too hard? To attract people or is this genuine part of my um energy signature so for me because i'm not an artist i know some of you would disagree when you see my mid, mid journey images um I, i'm i'm not <clears throat> i don't naturally I, it's very fun and cool to see that stuff but i don't naturally like oh well let me play with this for hours which is good because i save a lot of time i just go where's my energy signature video and when i'm like when I yell at people, either through video or through writings, that's my energy signature. <laughs> it's like, yell at you lovingly as a spiritual teacher. Um, so, yeah, I think that's the question is, where do you lean into your energy signature? And and then don't spend too much time doing it. So those are my two, <laughs> my two uh, you know, guidelines that you can play with. So hope that helps.